Now, Brent on the guard of our Jeremy rocking the Maridon. This is the matchup that we actually saw in the last round. We'll see if Jeremy can make Maridon look even better into Gardevoir. Yep, and on the other side, the Wet Goose is on the loose. Brent Tonneson bringing the Gardevoir with him all the way from Australia. We're going to see a rematch of round eight. <laughs> you guys chose it, not us, but this is going to be exciting to see as we have once more another Australian rocking the Gardevoir, trying to make it into day two. Yeah, I mean, the last time that Jeremy made day two, that was in Arlington. He was playing the Eternatus VMAX. That was one of his favorite decks from back in the day. And, you know, now Eternatus is rotated, but that's fine. That it, is fine. It had, it, had its, it had its final hurrah with the Galarian Weezing decks, but I got to give a special shout out to the, uh, the Pikachu deck box. It's amazing. Can we talk about how Brent is undefeated right now? <laughs> and is winning in. Oh, double Mareep. Oh, no. Two Mareeps in the prize. Double Curlia. Okay, so it's a little bit evened out where Jeremy's going to be slower on getting long-term energy acceleration, but then Brent's going to be a little bit worse at drawing more cards. We saw this earlier, right? Gardevoir versus Alex Kreckler. If they don't have that card draw, it is a little bit more difficult for them to keep up. I think Double Curly is a lot worse. There's mm -hmm. two rare candy in this list. If you don't have th these Pokemon, you're not evolving. <laughs> it's going to be very difficult to find your Pokemon at the right time. If Jeremy puts his foot on the gas, I think we're gonna see a lot of prize cards falling this way. And when you're playing Maridon, you go into the match, that's your first order of business. Do I have the resources? Do I have good setup potential to immediately start my aggressive strategy? Flying Pikachu V in the active is pretty strong just because of that free retreat. Wow, yeah, look at this hand here. You see plenty of energies along with the Ultra Ball to go along with this tandem unit. There's also Squawkabilly in the opening hand, so if Jeremy wants to see plenty of cards, they will be available. Squawkabilly has been a huge boon to Maride on EX. Again, just doubling down on that explosive opening potential. Your turn one and turn two, incredibly important, similar to like Turbo Lost Box, where players love to get ahead and try to stay ahead. Well, Jeremy's getting the bad news as he looks <laughs> through on the opening search. Is, uh, Bah? <laughs> the Maripis are missing. No sheep for you. Just going to have to play it straight up with the Raiko. Hopefully, we have outs for Electric Generator. Meanwhile, Brent Tonneson does have a routes in the active spot um, with a Battle VIP pass, grabbing Mew, Radiant Greninja. Still a pretty generally strong foundation for the Gardevoir list, even with uh, out the Curlia. Yeah, not only the fact that you don't have access to the energies that are going to hit the discard pile inevitably uh, is have losing the Mareep going to be an issue. But you also like having the opportunity to use this Pokemon as a single prize attacker. You can work it into the mix when Gardevoir deals enough damage to itself, mm -hmm. take a knockout, and maybe put your opponent on a clock where they have to have boss's orders. So you see Jeremy focused on that Zapdos, not too much interested in the lightning symbol. Instead says uh, uh, three energies for <laughs> what 110 or whatever. That's, that'll work. <laughs> I just need to take knockouts for one prize. And the trick is just going to be getting it uh, set up. Without Dynamotor, it is tricky to attach those three energies. Jeremy now going for Ultra Ball. I'm going to search for one more piece, probably Raikou. Yeah, I think you can fail this one. Ultimately, oh, yeah, okay. maybe you could, you could grab a Flaffy and just throw it away at this point, just because um, finding the Marif is going to be difficult enough. But just thinning down, leaving a bench spot for Squawkabilly. Yep. Okay, and again, starting with the Flying Pikachu V in the active gives Jeremy a lot of utility about how to play out this turn. There's a Squawk and Seize, discarding one Lightning Energy. You draw a new hand here. Six cards. Looks pretty good. Let me see. I don't know if you can tell, Kyle. Is there a Lightning Generator? Well, n I do not see that. I see Arvin, so next turn certainly will have some potential and no real reason to... Get aggressive right now. You've, you've got the bravery charm for your Raichu. You can fast uh, charge. Fast charge with the free retreat that you have available, and you can find those energies next turn. For a seal stone, okay. Not going to use it right away. Yeah, this is just Iono insurance, mm -hmm. often playing against the Gardevoirs. You, you will see that as an opening supporter. And we can see, you know, players love to save the forest seal stone for as long as possible. That way, if you need that final electric generator or a boss, you know, just pull that right out when you need it. But we're finally seeing the fast charge being used turn one. 
That's what it's there for. I mean, along with taking a bunch of knockouts with your second attack. But yeah, fast charge on the opening turn is a great way to just accelerate those energies, put a little pressure on. The board state's not great for Jeremy. You don't have any, uh, any Raikou to work into the mix, but you at least uh, have an attacker ready to go. Meanwhile, Brent is uh, turning up <laughs> with double battle VIP pass. So we can get the routes, the Radiant Greninja, Mew, and, but without the Curly, even though this is a strong setup, as you said, Kyle, without re refinement to get those Psychic Energies into the discard pile, once Gardevoir EX enters play, it won't really have much to do. Right. You, you see, when you have none of the, well, you have one of the prize Ralts and two prize Curlia, mm -hmm. you don't really get to take advantage of either of the setups where just one is gone. If you don't have the Curlias, just play down four Ralts, and eventually you can use those rare candies, mm -hmm. and you'll be okay. When you don't have the uh, the Ralts, you just use your Mirage Step and you ignore the fact that that's even a Pokemon. You get all your Curlia set up. It's got a little bit of a mix right now, and that's not where you want to be. And after this Iono, we've got one Psychic Energy for Concealed Cards. Can see a little bit more. Draws two. Yeah, there is another Energy as well, so Retreat into the Mew is still a viable option. Yep, and there it is, Mysterious Tail. What's Brent hoping for off of this ability right now, Kyle? Could certainly just be a, a level ball or a fog crystal, something mm -hmm. that you just hold on to for the next turn. And there's no real rush to play down these cards, but uh, he's, he's got everything that he wants. He's got rare candy, he's got, he has ultra ball, he's got access to fin finding more energies and continuing to draw. It's really on what Jeremy has in his hand, because if we see Path Judge, this could get scary. Brent is maybe getting lulled into a false sense of security. You look across the table, see there's no uh, Mareep, you see there's no Raikou, you assume, okay, maybe this Maridon's going to be just a touch slower, and I can get away with the setup, but could come back to haunt him. Well, there is an electric generator to start things off. All right, Jeremy, make can, us proud. Can Jeremy go undefeated here on these? Ooh! Ooh. All right, one, oh, one nothing. <laughs> Jeremy's talking about the zoomed in camera. We got it. Don't we, worry, we brother. We got you. We got you. <laughs> right on. Getting charged up. Raichu V also ready to take some knockouts. And it looks like Boss and the Path are likely going to be the choices here. <laughs> Not much else going on in the hand. One small note as well. Are we going to just discard one energy with Dynamic Spark, or is it better to retreat the Raichu and attach to Maridon and hit, uh, hit with that instead? Well, I, I oh. don't think we have the energy, so... <laughs> oh, I didn't see. <laughs> yeah. Well, without that, it's just going to be 70 with the addition of the Zapdos. Well done. 10 extra damage. Take, a, take another prize. And uh, as you see with Gardevoir, when your opponent puts on a lot of early pressure, you have to respond. Rare Candy, Gardevoir, so you can begin attacking. Fortunately, because Jeremy's deck is mostly two prize Pokemon, it will be easier for Brent to catch up if he does whiff on this turn. Yeah, for, for Brent, this would be a great turn to use the Mirage Step if the prize cards weren't as bad as they were. Even though that's the case, I think you still go for it. You have to get this Pokemon into play as Jeremy sings the name of the attack. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think there's a little more play from this hand. We still see that there's the Rare Candy and the Ultra Ball along with the Iono. So ultimately, pretty solid start given what the prize cards look like. And... With Gardevoir, it's a very expert deck at seeming to make do with almost nothing because of the amount of card draw you can do with just a few Pokemon in play. Radiant Greninja, one Refinement Curlia, Shining Arcana. You see so many extra cards. Well, that might be the end of that <laughs> because... <laughs> you see there is no other Curlia right now, and mm -hmm. if you draw into one here off of Iono, that could be very bad news. Uh, oh, man. Thankfully, dodges that. and No punish. Has Fog Crystal. And from this point, you're looking at Cresselia. You know, just trying to get something else set up in play, right? Right. And you, you have to start branching out from this point. Maybe you just continue to go after the energies we see. But thankfully, the, the Curlios will still be around. You can get that put into play and maybe try to draw out of this mess. That path sticking is 
going to be pretty difficult for Brent. <laughs> what can you do if Refinement gets knocked out this turn by a, perhaps even a, a boss's orders? Get rid of the Refinement, keep the path stuck, deny that energy acceleration is the name of the game for Jeremy Jallen to really run away with this first game. And against Gardevoir, a deck that's developed a reputation for you know being prone to ties because there's so many actions that you take per turn. Brent Tonneson at 404 kind of attests to that. If Jeremy can take a quick game one, buys plenty of time for second and third game to fully conclude. Here is Jeremy's second electric generator. Let's see it. Oh, to the camera. Double trouble. The double double. Let's go. He is the blessed Maridon player this time around. He wasn't planning to get this lucky, <laughs> or else we'd see these energies already played down. One to the Maridon, one to the other, and at least you have an attack lined up here. And it was a, it, it lined up easier last time to just discard one energy with the dynamic spark to take the one prize KO, but without Marie and Flaffy to get those energies back from the discard pile, it starts to become a bit more taxing the more and more you rely on dynamic spark. Raichu loves to be the late game attacker. Not really doing too much early work for this list. Oh, what do you do here? This is so tricky. Has the judge in hand. Doesn't really want to play it, as we saw nothing on Brent's side of the board. But he has Path to the Peak in his hand, and he also had the Professor's Research. Didn't want to lose those valuable resources, as he knows that those are a great way to potentially lock Brent out of the game. So go ahead and try to slow down things. Four cards now for Brent. And... Maybe this is going to be the opportunity if you find a supporter and maybe you can start to take some knockouts. Yep, new hand, new future, psychic energy, boss's orders. No stadium, though. Path looks like it's going to stick for another round. Forest Seal Stone being finally utilized on the Flying Pikachu V that was set up previously. And Jeremy's just thinking, okay, I've got the attack here. Take out a Curlia. Should be fine. Yeah, this is a very important energy. <laughs> it's holding on to the, the star alchemy can be a great way to avoid running into issues when your opponent starts to play the Iono. So really valuing this card this turn. I didn't see what the grab was. Oh, what did Jeremy get just, off the four seal stone? Just grabbed a lightning energy. And wow. Throws it on the Maridon. So I'm, all I need right now is to make sure that I have back-to-back -back attacks in this situation and feels comfortable just attacking with the Maridon, attaching. And Beautiful. Brent has some work to do. Mareep's still in the prizes. Bench is full, squawk ability sitting there. And what's nice here too, right, is Jeremy's kind of got the situation established where if Brent wants to get around this path of the peak, has to play something like a Collapse Stadium, and then Jeremy can just get rid of that squawk ability EX. Ooh. I think we see the worker there, and that is exactly what Brent is looking for. Nice pickup. Removes that path to the peak, finds some additional resources, has the attacker lined up, and now it's about chaining together enough energies. We see a few in the discard pile. Is there enough for a knockout? Not yet. Oh, hadn't used Mysterious Tail yet either. But now it's just one Gardevoir EX, one Shining Arcana Gardevoir. Is Jeremy going to try to knock out the Gardevoir EX? Do you not have enough damage? And then if, as soon as the Shining Ar Arcana Gardevoir is established, it's just a low HP attacker that is taking a prize turn after turn, two prizes even. Yeah, I think the, f the focus has to be on Brent here as there's I don't think there's an attack lined up that makes much of a difference. There's one ener one psychic energy left in the hand. We see the super rod now. And yeah, tries to get the Grouts and the Curlia back. Needs to establish additional lines to get Shining Arcanas down. Having that powerful single prize attack is so important to how you manipulate the prize race in this matchup. So after the super rod, level ball gets the routes back down onto the bench. And is there only, was that four or five psychic energy available? Yeah, there's four and there's one energy in hand as well, so. Yeah, the Curlias just weren't really able to accomplish a lot of the early homework that they need to do to get the psychic energies stacked up. 
It's going to be the Cresselia to place some additional damage counters. Wisely, we see Brent uh, trying to accelerate onto the Gardevoir without damaging it. As you know, that, that often can be an issue that this deck runs into, is uh, walking into the one, one prize Pokemon on the other side. And once all this energy is attached, and then all the damage goes flying over to Jeremy's side, we've got a damage ride on EX in the active spot. And because of that uh, Photon Blaster, we'll need to be retreated. Can't attack again this turn, but Jeremy had already established, of course, the Maridon needing one more energy so it could attack into Professor's research. Yep, it's go time. Of course, finding a card like Switch Cart would be phenomenal here, not only just to heal this Pokemon a little bit, and wow, found both switching effects, the Escape Rope and the Switch Cart. And slowly but surely, Jeremy's just going to take a prize, take a prize, take a prize. But with Brent set up finally with the Gardevoir EX, not getting locked down by Path to the Peak, there is, you know, that again, this potential for the chain of attackers, as you talked about, Kyle, to just take two prizes, two prizes, two prizes, just take this game back. Ooh, but second path. Going to try to put a wrench in that situation. Yeah, very strong there from Jeremy. Takes the knockout. And once more, Brent has to find a way to counter this stadium. Uh, it has the Collapse Stadium in hand. It drew another one, though. Squawkabilly. It's going to go down, and it's just going to be the Iono. And Jeremy, of course, on three path to the peak in this deck. So yeah, I believe there was one in hand as well for Jeremy. So down to the bottom of the deck now. Already used for a seal stone. Isn't going to be able to get that anytime soon. So this is the window that Brent opened for himself to be able to use that Psychic Embrace wow. very consistently. That was a very good draw. <laughs> Not only finding the Ralts, but also the Reversal Energy. And now our, uh, the Gardevoir is going to be set up chock full of energy to take this knockout. Just double checking the math there. Attack goes through, no Bravery Charm on the Maridon EX. Right. This is going to be Jeremy's first look at the hand. Switch cart Arvin and the, el the electric generator, too. Okay. Now, the Bravery Charm, there is only one in the deck. Looking at it now, that's attached to the Raichu V. So a lot of the Pokemon that Brent Tonneson wants to KO will be easy pickings. Tandem unit now being activated by Jeremy to refill this bench. Yep. And let me see, the Iona happened after he got the Mareep off the prizes. Yeah, so. Mareep is in the deck now. However, could run into issues where uh, Cresselia could target down that Pokemon. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously for Brent now, in a situation where he would like to continue to just attack into these two prize Pokemon. And it is just one bench space right now with the Collapse Stadium in play. So Jeremy is going to focus on the V Pokemon there in the Raikou. Can retreat into it to draw one more card if he needs to. Maridon EX is already established, of course, with three energies attached. Here comes Electric Generator. And another Woo! hit for two. Jeremy is showing us how it's done, Kyle. That's how can we get this good at Maridon so quickly? Snore at 5.30 in the morning. <laughs> that's, that's all I know. Just, just get your beauty rest. That's the secret <laughs> to your electric generators hitting. Oh, they dude. run on your sleep power. Well, look, yeah, look at this. Energy in hand, too. You can play that down onto the Raichu V. You have an attacker lined up for the Gardevoir to take this prize and go down to two prize cards remaining. You could line up a knockout on this Gardevoir EX potentially next turn. That'd be something else. Yeah, with the help of Dynamic Spark. Love this here. Ooh. Sneaky. Switch card to get a little bit of healing on the Maridon. Brings Raikou V up into the active spot so we can fleet-footed draw one card. It's going to be a pretty nice knockout here. I haven't played a supporter, right? No. Yep. There's Arvin. Find a Pokemon tool and an item. The only other tool, I think, in the deck was Cleansing Gloves, which is in the prizes. Just grabs the yeah. electric generator. This will be number four. The energy would be nice. The most important thing, however, is 
that you could thin another card out. And getting closer to the boss's orders is exactly what Jeremy needs here. We'll see. And <laughs> oh, right in the man. window. All the electri <laughs> electric generators hit. Jeremy is that guy is that right here seven, in first game number one. Seven for eight <laughs> on, on, on <laughs> potential energy drops. Brent has to be thinking, come on, man. <laughs> I'm trying my best with two prized Curlias and a prized Ralts. Every time you hit electric generator, an angel gets its wings. After the knockout, goes back over to Brent Tonneson, promotes Mew to the active spot, Fog Crystal for a psychic energy. Has Radiant Greninja to discard that, draw two. But uses the Fog Crystal first to thin down, gets the Zacian V. The final attacker that's going to take over for the Shining Arcana Gardevoir. Brent has a little more drawing to do. Would like to incorporate a single prize Pokemon in this instance. So Shining Arcana could work its way into the mix. Mm -hmm. Along with the Iona would be really strong as maybe you can avoid your opponent having uh, the last energies along with the boss's orders to take a knockout. It is, it is a stretch to, uh, to take a knockout on a Pokemon as large as the Gardevoir, but... Uh, Does Brent have, a, have another rod? I think so. To, to get the Cresselia back at the very least? Again, weaving in that single prize attacker, so important. Yep, Brent is playing two copies. Ultra Ball, just to... Get these out of the hand. There's the Gardevoir, very thin deck, and there is the reversal energy still there as well. So finding the knockout should be fairly simple. It's just about piecing it together along with the Iono. Yeah. Manages to pick up that Shutting Arcana Gardevoir. Oh, with that, this is another energy. great strategy, Ooh. too. You've already seen all of the electric generators. Boss's orders can target down the Raichu V. There's no Pokemon that can knock out this Gardevoir right now. And this means that the Zacian is going to be an easy closeout here for Brent. And just when all hope seemed lost, Brent, with a very thin deck now, brings up the Raichu V. That was the late game attacker that Jeremy wanted to seal the deal on this game. After taking two prizes, evening things up, Jeremy is presented with a single prize attacker in the active spot and nothing with, a, with the damage output to take down Gardevoir EX. Yep. Path to the peak is really the only saving grace here for Jeremy at this point. Oh, you definitely have it. Yeah, well, there is one I... more path. Not Thank sure you. what the counts are. Uh, Jeremy's going to take a look here with the Maridon. Maybe there's a window where you can find the Iono off of a Fleet Footed, and then you could uh, potentially, well, you can't grab all of those. There's a Collapse Stadium. So we got to. Oh, wait, hang on. Those. Catch him. Catch him. Collapsed. I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, yeah. Okay. It, they got it. Yeah. Just put one back, right? Yeah. It should be. Right? Yeah. 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 All right. So there's, there's an avenue. You could bring up the, the Raikou. Maybe you find the Iono. You use the Iono. You find the path. And then you can put your opponent in a spot where they can't find it. Jeremy doesn't believe in that. He's going to use the professor's research, look for the path, and hopefully this sticks. But there's a lot of cards in Brent's hand. Does find the path, however. And are you going to promote the Raikou, get that card draw beforehand? No, just leaves the, plays the path, bumps the collapsed. Yep, same amount of hit points, so yeah, it is missing out on a card, but ultimately he's just trying to uh, dodge the, the stadium here from Brent. Okay, path to the peak, trying to hold back the Gardevoir, and the next collapsed is there. That's going to be game one going to Brent Tonneson. Yeah, what a strong play there from Brent. Just trying to piece it together. There were so many things against him in that game. Saw seven energies generated. 
side, but also on the other side, no Marie. When you can't accelerate those energies, your game plan's very linear, and Brent was able to target in onto the, the Raikou V and put himself in a really great spot with that last closing turn. Yeah, finally taking out the Raichu. So important, even hits through the Bravery Charm that Jeremy had set up earlier in the game. And this was, you gotta remember, Brent had two Curly as prized and navigated it beautifully. At the end, I navigated well. Well, as you say that, Brent also agrees. <laughs> I mean, you, sometimes you got to toot your own horn, Kyle. You got to yeah. know when you played well. Yeah. And Jeremy played well for certain as well. And as we go into game number two, as long as he can keep up that lucky streak and keep hitting these uh, electric generators, Brent Tonneson is still going to have a pretty hard time dealing with this Maridon list. Yeah, the main enemy here at this point is 26 minutes remaining on the clock. If Jeremy does want to make a game three of this, it's going to have to move quickly. That doesn't involve giving your opponent a free card off a mulligan. Yeah, we only had to wait for the game one. Yeah, just a mulligan here. Brent's going to get one more draw to start the game off. In between games, they just pull it up. But both players having a good time. Jeremy's happy to be playing. Happy to be in this position, right? 5-2-1, pretty respectable in the modern era. Because we talked about it over and over again throughout the day and at the top of show that... There's a lot of heavy hitters out here in the field. That's right. Oh, did get to take a peek. Oh my goodness. Can you calm down? Mirage Step fries along with double Ralts. Okay. Brent, if you win this one, I don't know what to say. Yeah, Brent <laughs> is playing Gardevoir on hard mode, Kyle. I guess you gotta do it to him. <laughs> Go ahead. Jeremy with the Opener of a lifetime here. Energy into the discard pile. Ultra Ball as well. Squawkabilly. I believe there is a rope and an electric generator. He could just put a fully powered Maridon or Raikou in the active spot turn one. And Brent Tonneson starting off with the Zacian V. Back in the day, Gardevoir really liked, you know, having the early Zacian V. When the meta was a little bit slower, you just attach for turn, roar the sword, and you have that threat potential of just starting to take prizes from your opponent right away. And with Zacian potentially offering up some easy early prizes, it really does help Jeremy Jallen's uh, prize mapping for the second game. Well, Jeremy found his friends. The Ba Boys are back in town. They will evolve, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I like this setup a lot more than the last one, although the Zapdos did make a little bit of sense when you're trying to potentially incorporate a single prize Pokemon into the mix. When you have access to all these energies and you can attack with a consistent Pokemon like that Raikou V, probably feeling pretty good. All you right. know what else would be pretty good? Energies. He, he's insane, Kyle. <laughs> he's cooking. The two lightning on Maridon still has the Squawk and Seize available. Yeah, look at that. Loading up to threaten the Zacian V on the second turn. That is terrifying for Brent. Don't want to lose those prize cards that early. We're not done he, here, folks. <laughs> he's got one more. This, there's still so many cards in the deck, Kyle. I'm scared. This he's is, doing it again. <laughs> this is pre-Billy. <laughs> he's got the squawk still. <laughs> we, we can find all the energies. It's not easy being this cheesy. Look at all that yellow. Mm. Well... <laughs> I guess this happens. is how you want to start off the game, too. <laughs> I, I don't think we can complain. And the attack this return, right? This is, is the rope the into the high rope. five squawkabilly. <laughs> squawkabilly. Just let's draw six and then fleet footed for seven. That's a free research. Brent's like, can I please play Pokemon? <laughs> I saw his hand. It's not good. This, this is the turn one of all time. It is a turn of Pokemon, for sure. This one can't oh, okay, happen. that was a good top deck. Radiant Greninja, can it find some help? He's oh, alive wow, in the Battle it, VIP. Okay, he's alive. Battle VIP and Mew. Brett Tonneson. Oh, no, there's Mew there. What was it? It was another psychic Pokemon added to the hand. Regardless, much better than what the hand looked like. I thought I saw like four energies and a rare candy. Ugh. But Radiant Greninja comes through to save the day. Save Brent from this horrible rocky start. Has a fog crystal as well. The establishment is coming through. Just needs a way to get the Zacian V out of the active. Try to avoid giving up those easy prizes as long as he can. 
This is where I'd put my Ralts if I had one. Game three coming your way. <laughs> Jeremy wasted a lot of good luck, I think, off that strong turn one. But can he do it again in game number three, Kyle? Oh, this is what we've been waiting for. Wow. What an interesting way to get to game three. The duality of setups <laughs> for your turn one in Pokemon. Brent Tonneson made it as difficult as possible to play a real game of Gardevoir with that prize distribution. He has taken as many ties as he will allow himself to take. Mm -hmm. No more shall we tie. We're going into game three, 21 minutes remaining. I mean, took your advice directly, Kyle. The early scoop, saving as much time as possible to go into game number three. Jeremy was also facing a little bit of frustration. Took that tie earlier and it seemed like he was in a winning position, but didn't have enough turns to get the knockouts. You don't beat me, I beat me. <laughs> Brent ran away after he saw all of these energies on the opening turn into the perfectly played out hand here with the Squawkabilly, Squawk and Seize. For you on mathematicians out there in the audience, Jeremy Jalen is on 14 lightning energy, so do with that information what you will. I think I'm gonna play 14. This seems <laughs> to be a sweet number here. And uh, both players still getting set up for game number three. A lot of shuffling to be had. A couple mulligans canceling each other out. But look at this just perfect start. You could not ask for a better start than this when you're playing Maridon. This is, the you get a setup like this once with Maridon, and you spend the rest of your Pokemon career chasing this I I don't know, it wasn't that great. There wasn't even a path to the peak. Very true. What a, very what, true. A, what a horrible start. He's just a homie. He was like, okay, <laughs> but I'm gonna I'm gonna let you use your abilities. <laughs> uh, the Q deck box is powerful. That's the reason. I'm pretty sure this isn't a cosplay, by the way. This is just Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he picked up. I think those are the sunglasses he picked up in Portland. Oh, well, maybe they've got something going on. I, I think on. those were heart shaped ones. All right, real Pokemon to be played. Only a Gardevoir EX in the prize cards. We can work with that. Yeah, on the Jeremy, other side for Jeremy not too bad. Balls. Not too shabby. The one path to the peak, a little unfortunate. You love to see that at the right time. It's at the top of the prize cards, so not this time around. But Brent Tonneson going to open things up with a real game of Gardevoir. Routes in the active spot, has Mew level ball now to check the deck. Everything seems fine. We're fine. Mm -hmm. I'm fine. Brent says, okay, I like my prizes a little bit more now. It's time to get down to business in this third game. 19 minutes left on the clock, and both players are going to be trying their best to make sure this comes to a proper resolution. Attach, return, and retreat into Mew. Mysterious Tail. Top six, trying to find a good, good card here. Oh, Anything? Ultra Ball. That is not... Battle VIP pass. And this hand doesn't have many cards that you can lose. It's going to lose one of the reversal energies, and I believe another is in the prize card. So access to none of those could certainly gonna lead to Going to extend it to Greninja here just to see a little bit more. Yeah. It, it came up big in game number two. I think that's got to be the route at this stage. You, just, you have not seen the right cards. Staring at a battle VIP pass, that is, uh, that's brutal. <laughs> I need that in my hand. All right, Greninja, you have your assignment. One Psychic Energy exchanged for two cards off the top. And this is going to be incredibly important for Brent to complete this setup. Let's go. Boss. And, and I and don't Iono. know. Pass. Oh, no. So now it's back over to Jeremy, starting with Raikou V in the active. Has an extra card thanks to Fleet Footed. Right on EX off the top now. Going to look through the deck with Tandem Unit to find a couple more Lightning Pokemon, thin down, and then start drawing. This is not exactly an ideal hand as well. We've seen plenty of supporter cards, but usually you're trying to play a few items before you get the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. Might have to play very aggressive, throw down the Professor's Research, and try to get into a turn one attack. Yeah, of there's course. one Lightning Energy in the hand for an attachment. Yep. If you leave bench space open for the squawk ability, it leads to potentially you are, are a little more likely to find that opening attack. And this could be a scenario where you don't use the double tandem unit, or at least you save the, at least one spot. But I think we'll Jeremy's thinking about it. Certainly, because there is two nest ball in the deck. 
and there's two Ultra Ball in the prizes, but is not confident in this Quackabilly. He's saying now he's debating it. And mm -hmm. All right, let's see if I can win the game on the spot. Trusting in the, uh, in the professor's research, it looks like. All right. Converting all of your electric generator luck into professor's research oh, luck. Oh, this okay. He's, he said he's trying to win on the spot. If he can find, I think he has an electric generator. If he has the energy to retreat, he has the boss's orders to go after the Ralts. Two energies would be huge here. Oh, wow. Unreal. He saw the line, committed to it, and went all in. Electric generator comes up big once more for Jeremy Jallen. Two lightning attached to the second Ryko V. And now to retreat, bring this bad boy into the active spot. There's the attached return to pay for that retreat cost. And there was the boss's orders in the hand. Yes, Kyle? He's got it. <laughs> he, he definitely has it fleet-footed to draw an additional card here. And this goes in combination with a path to the peak Ooh. to slow things down. Target the Ralts. That is a turn one knockout on the most important Pokemon on Brent's field. And now... Brent does not have access to battle VIP Look at pass. His hand. He has nothing, he just has to Iono it away. What can Brent get from this point? Pokemon. Without, without access to battle VIP, you just have to draw right into the routes. Just he just found all the Pokemon. <laughs> he found four different ball searches. Okay. We might still have a real game here, Kyle. Uh, Level ball for routes. We can still rely on Mirage Step at some point. Jeremy just has to nod his head. <laughs> He's like, I thought I got rid of you guys. It was a very audacious line. Looked to be the best one, but Brant had the clutch Iona of destiny into the level balls. Honestly, here. It's, it's still phenomenal. You set mm -hmm. your opponent back at least one turn. It, it slows the clock down. The path to the peak is still sticking in this situation. And sure, you can find a fog crystal here, but you're not advancing your board state. You're just playing down a few Ralts and hoping to uh, get something in the future. And uh, there is Mirage Step for the following turn, but mm -hmm. you're going to be down three prize guards by the time you get that attack off. And this puts Jeremy in a great position to generate even more tempo, right? Just keep establishing dominance, maybe get Flaffies into play now to keep your attackers up and running. Maybe another boss's orders. Bring up another routes. There is escape rope, but I think Brent would make the wise choice <laughs> <laughs> with the Radiant Greninja. Eh? Eh? <laughs> There's the Dynamotor. Uh, Path was great just to set it up, but now no fleet footed means that Jeremy's committing to just a more linear option of I'm just going to attack. Good call, Brent. Promote to the Radiant Greninja. This is a Pokemon you certainly could lose at this stage. And it's going to use the Judge. Four cards now. Brent is going to be looking for some help. Even with the, uh, the counter stadium now to the path, you lose access to the Radiant Greninja. It's going to be in the discard pile. So it has to be a lot of good draws chained together or at least a Mirage Step. And after a few level balls already used, it's going to be more difficult for, you know, Mysterious Tail to bail Brent out to even find that Curlia. That is a great point. We've seen multiple level ball and Ultra Ball played. Yeah, just Desperate to get to Ultra this Ball point. just to get the Radiant Greninja. This hand is not great from Brent. For a Seal Stone set up for later. Easy knockout. Two prizes early for Jeremy Jallen. Brent Tonneson promotes the Mew as we predicted. Fog Crystal. Okay. Yeah, this is for the energy, as you want to make sure you have a way to pivot into the Mirage Step. There also is Worker, which could remove the path to the peak, which isn't as important now, but drawing three cards is very good. You need to work your way towards Mirage Step, hopefully without drawing into additional Curlia. If you do, you get to draw a little more with your second Ralts. Oh, man. Big three cards. Ra Rare Candy. I think I saw a Supporter. Fog Crystal. And Iono. Second Mew. Fog Crystal. We need help from you. And I mean, yeah, remember, Fog Crystal can only grab a basic Psychic Pokemon. Has to grab another Routes. I mean, we, can, we can go through. There, there still are a few copies of Level Ball and Ultra Ball that potentially could be found. One Ultra Ball in the prize cards, it looks like. So three 
different ball searches that could be found here with the Mew. And okay. Ultra Ball immediately off the top. Okay, Ultra Ball is found. Brent Tonneson just barely hanging on by his fingernails in this game, Kyle, is now going to get established with a Mirage step to get some Curlius down and finally get his plan up and running. <sighs> just barely holding on. But this is what Gardevoir does. It continues to fight. He's going to come up with a pretty solid setup, although everything has gone against him this game. And now with multiple Curlias in play, not only is this access to refinement, this is access to Gardevoir. Not prize this game. And even though Jeremy has two Raikou ready to go, threat of double Dynamoter to keep the attackers going, Brent Tonneson is going to be able to respond with his own brand of energy acceleration thanks to Psychic Embrace and keep up with this oncoming onslaught. Take a look at the hand from Jeremy. Path to the Peak is there, but of course you can weave in these fleet-footed first. Taking the knockout here on the active Curlia. Not the best, not the worst. Using a boss's orders doesn't feel great because you're probably looking to hold on to that for a huge cleanup turn mm -hmm. on a Gardevoir EX to try to close this game out. So I think the main objective is just play energies down. If you're getting additional energies onto the board, then you're going to be in a situation where you can take those two prize cards before Brent is able to. Mm -hmm. I kind of like to retreat here on the Raikou. Bring up the second one, get another fleet footed. You can just put that energy back with Dynamotor. Going to go for Forest Seal Stone first instead. Maybe picking up the second Flaffy here? Or Ultra Ball to thin... I don't know if that Bravery Charm is on the bottom or if Jeremy brought it to the front for consideration. Yeah, this is tricky, even considering boss's orders here. Just limiting the potential draw from Brent if you're able to target down mm. uh, Refinement Curlia. The issue is, if Brent finds one Shining Arcana, the whole board could just erupt. <laughs> we could see Candy Gardevoir, the other two refinements being used and you're still drawing plenty of cards here it's an incredibly tough choice to wait your game three winning in against Gardevoir's ability to draw <laughs> <laughs> it definitely finds cards so I think it was indeed the boss's orders picked up off the forest seal stone dynamotor reattaching the energy onto the bench Ryko V boss's orders wants one refinement Curlia out to the peak, now reestablishing Jeremy Jallen, taking his third prize card of this game. Yeah, still not sure how I feel about this. It's, it's difficult to say. It's, uh, the path should pr easily get countered in a situation like this. There's mm -hmm. access to plenty of draw, but I understand the, the reasoning. As you're trying to slow down the draws, maybe buy yourself one additional turn. As Gardevoir EX. Rare Candy's not doing too much. We got Rare Candy, another Ralts. So now it's all set up. Rare Candy into Gardevoir EX. Collapse Stadium. Gets rid of Mew. Jeremy decides to get rid of Maridon. Very nice. Yep. That way, again, you're just keeping your Flaffies down. That was a pretty good turn. That was a very good turn. <laughs> Iono to refresh, slow down Jeremy, down to just three cards. Has already used Forest Seal Stone as he knew that he wanted to attack with this Raikou V. Char <laughs> it's exactly as you said it, Kyle. The board is indeed erupting, shining Arcana now. And now all the attachments in the world, thanks to Psychic Embrace. Yeah, there, there was a situation where you just use the other, use the active Ryko V, you hold onto the Forest Seal Stone, and you have a draw uh, out to this. Instead, now you're, you're going to lose that attacker and be scrapping to take the knockouts here. Thankfully, there's a relevant amount of damage on the Gardevoir, so maybe you can work in a different attacker. The issue is that Brent made it so that it was only 80, so uh, do, dealing 50 doesn't help here. Exactly, because of the Marat... Jeremy went for the refinement curlier to hurt the card draw. This Mirage Step curlier had an extra energy already attached to it. So the, this, uh, arc, this Gardevoir in the active spot comes out of this transaction a little bit healthier. Brainwave. And there's the Brainwave for two prizes for Brent Tonneson, slowly closing the gap in this third game. Jeremy promotes Raikou V, has access to Fleet Footed, of course. 
draws for turn. Another boss's orders. There is another uh, electric generator, too. Not seen the tandem unit first. And oh no, Ooh, the finally punish. a whiff. The pendulum is swinging the other way against Jeremy Jallen. I was wondering if we would see tandem unit to thin, maybe get Raichu out with the boss's orders, a couple electric generators, put something together that way. It's a tall order for certain. I mean, there, there's potential to, to find a lot of great answers if you find a good supporter to go with this. And it's just the boss's orders now. And sure, you're continuing to take knockouts. You can knock out this active Gardevoir. However, you only have two energies left on board if this Raikou is knocked out. Benching flying Pikachu V just to have that free retreat as a pivot. Jeremy Jalen has two Ultra Balls in the prizes, and I think that that's kind of what's starting to gum him up in the mid game now, being unable to search through, thin the hand, find that second Flaffy, have the Dynamotors really working that's overtime to keep the attackers going. <laughs> Now Brent Tonneson still has access to two refinements. Potentially another Shining Arcana to draw more cards from this point. Wow. Super Rod. Mm-hmm. Yep, starting things off with the Super Rod to uh, cycle in an Full entire effort. line. <laughs> and along with this, has the Iono uh, for the turn. Could not only disrupt Jeremy's hand, but continue to build on this board here. Take another two prize cards with the Shining Arcana Gardevoir. And it just lines up so well into the prize exchange. Yeah, Jeremy Jallen is forced to just keep attacking, keep taking prizes. And now with refinement, finds that Ralts indeed. And there's the evolution. Two more Shining Arcana finds the other Shining Arcana. It's disgusting, Kyle. <laughs> and a free attachment thanks to that ability. Any psychic energy you find off of Shining Arcana, you can just attach. And once again, these Pokemon are getting powered up without Psychic Embrace. Makes it harder for Jeremy to strike back. Yep, each one of these is ever so important to avoiding that awkward exchange, uh, being attacked by a Flaffy. Picks up a level ball off of his refinement. To grab Curlia. This Ralts can now evolve into the Curlia, right? This one's not fresh. So it's another refinement for the Battle VIP pass. Brent's job at this point is to thin the deck down as best as possible, leave it so that uh, in a world where there is any disruption, you at least have either the worker to remove the path or the boss to try to win the game. And now Brent just taking a moment to consider, is there anything else I can thin out of this hand? Something I can set up, something to establish? Bench is the Ralts. And you can see here, after all the refinements and all the card draw, all of the, you know, bad cards that you don't need anymore find their way into the hand, and it's up to Brent to find a way to get these into the discard pile. One Ultra Ball in the prizes. It's an easy way to discard, but no access right now. Has to wait for Refinement to come back around. Brent contemplating Worker to remove his own Collapse Stadium, draw its deck out, and use the second Super Rod. Instead now, he's going to use the Iono. All right, so has to cut the big hand, is going to get these four, excuse me, these three cards left in the deck, plus one from his original hand. Two. Well, Jeremy's down to two cards. Gardevoir gets powered up thanks to Psychic Embrace. Takes a little bit of damage in the process. Plenty of energy to, for Brainwave to knock out the Raikou V. And for Brent, has all the answers in hand now. Double boss's orders, counter stadium. Plenty of ways to close things out. Jeremy needs top deck Judge or top deck Iono in this situation. And with both Raikou V out of the equation, losing out on that extra draw from Fleet Footed Ooh, really takes away the utility. Jeremy, I see you. He's got an energy and a switch cart. I think we might be going for some Thunder Shock. <laughs> All right, there's Arvin to Thin. Yep. In every other universe, Free Retreat, Flying Pikachu makes a lot of sense in the active. But if you think you need to use your Flaffy, maybe it stays on the bench for a minute. 
So thinking about switching into the the Flaffy, you mean? No, the Thundershock no, the, the Flying it, Pikachu V. Right, it just needed the it needed the the any Pokemon any other Pokemon active basic Pokemon active to switch cart into the Flying Pikachu after using the Dynamotor. If Jeremy can get some paralysis action going, nice. How do you still have boss in hand? then all that energy <laughs> would be stranded. And this is all about buying time, trying to work closer towards top deck Iono, get in a situation where maybe you can slow down Brent enough or he just draws into the wrong resources. But there's two Curlias and not a lot of deck left. Yeah, this is so go close, in. Kyle. It, and Jeremy is certainly on the back foot from this position. We know that Gardevoir loves to have this prize trade across the table from it every single time. Uh, if I can attack with a single prize, you have to promote a two prize Pokemon in order to get the knockout. And Jeremy is keeping his options open, playing this deck very creatively, and might indeed be leaning onto the Thundershock. All right, buy a turn with Thundershock, top deck boss, grab the Gardevoir, Thundershock that, and then knock it out with a Raichu on the next turn. Dynamotor attaches to Here Raichu. Here we go. Flying it's Pikachu game time. V. We're going to Thundershock. Is Jeremy <laughs> still in this tournament? Switch cart into Flying Pikachu. He's going to flip a coin. Oh! The <laughs> paralysis. Yeah. Should be 10 more damage on that Gardevoir, I believe. Yeah, no uh, baby Zapdos down to affect that. I think he just put 10 damage on it. I didn't see them. Either way, I don't know how we got to an odd marker. <laughs> yeah, and it needs to be, I think, rotated the other way, right, for, for we'll, paralysis? We'll figure it out. <laughs> the cool thing happened. <laughs> hey, thanks, Jeremy. Right. Always think and stream first. It yeah, point. it's paralyzed. Everybody knows it. Yeah, yeah. All right, boss all flaffy. <laughs> I was hoping, like, okay, I could do this top deck boss off the Oh, top. Jeremy's calling out the strategies, right. but they are not there anymore. Okay, I, it's, I don't even know what, if there is a resource that helps him out here. Yeah, I'd already used the switch cart last turn. What's game. the draw? It'd have to be uh, es escape uh, rope. The glove. There's a cleansing glove. Judge. There's a judge. Is Maybe there a way to move this Flaffy? Anyway, this deck We're is running two switch Ooh, carts. Oh. Two rope. Have we seen all the rope? Two rope. I don't think so, but we'll find out. Yeah, there, I think there was one rope played earlier, like way earlier in the game. Well, Jeremy is still holding on. Rope yeah. into any Pokemon. Well, actually, that's, that's, that's the issue, is using rope, you could promote a Pokemon that you could evolve and avoid the paralysis. Hmm. I don't think that we see that card ready to roll. You can, of course... Dynamotor, get all these energies charged up for if you do find that turn to use the Raichu V. But Brent has plenty of draws and is just looking to find that boss's orders, which is in his hand. There it is, folks. The Wet Goose getting it done in turn two of time in a phenomenal set up against Jeremy Jallen. Undefeated yeah, <laughs> into day two. Jeremy Jallen pulled out all the stops and made that one of Brent Tonneson's hardest sets, I imagine, of the Swiss rounds to make it into day two. And we've seen previously on the stream that Maradon versus Gardevoir is a pretty rough matchup, but Jeremy hit those electric generators and made the deck look good. Yeah, I mean, what a great set to close out on. Both players having a great time during that match. It's obviously, as a caster, when you get an opportunity to play a big game like this up against one of the best players in the world, it's just great to, to relive that opportunity that 
me and Jeremy, and plenty of other casters as well. We've been playing for so many years. Just the opportunity to play against these guys and test ourselves. See if you still have what it takes to play against the big guys. Jeremy yeah. certainly has proven that he has exactly what it takes. And what a great match to close out. Yeah, there's a lot of chatter at the table. And that's when you know you had a great match of Pokemon. When you're sitting there talking with your opponent of, you know, how we did this, what I was strategizing, you know, how that game played out, what could have been done differently. It's a great moment to share the spirit of competition. And look at just, just tie together a montage of all of these electric generators <laughs> just hitting. There were so many. He whiffed one. Only one, I believe it was, and it Kyle. was, And it was because he didn't use tandem unit first. Yeah. <laughs> Instant punish. The pokey gods have spoken. <laughs> yeah, this was a really big play here from Brent in that match, uh, or that game. Found an opportunity to target down that Raichu V. There was no attacker that could take two prize cards in this situation. And Brent was able to close out, even though he had prized two Curlia and a Ralts that game. Let's not even talk about the prizes in game two. Yeah, and very smartly scooped it up, took it to game three, but a great, a great set. And you know, too, when players are like down to the wire, just scrapping as much as they can to find the win is where the odd lines you never see come out of the woodwork. And when you've got Jeremy Jallen back into a corner, he's going to look and say, well, I've still got this Thundershock idea. I live for that. Buy a turn, and even Brent had to respond with a boss stall on the Flasky to buy a turn to wait out the paralysis and go through and had the final boss in hand. Yep, what a big turn here in game two. Found the double generator, takes the boss, knock it on the Ralts. Brent says, Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> and in just, just the confidence, there was never any doubt. Jeremy, bam, flips it over. continuing to see all those energies. Jeremy put himself in a pretty great spot in those opening turns. It was really turn three, turn four, where the wheels started to come off. Could not find a way to accelerate energies onto the board and mm -hmm. also threaten Raichu. And that's really where this deck starts to struggle against the Gardevoir. Typically we saw players including um, the Box of Disasters earlier as an uh, opportunity to buy some time, take knockouts on the Gardevoir, and fix the prize exchange. That's not going to be featured in these lists anymore. Instead, now moving to additional hit points for other matchups. Yeah, I mean, Jeremy was even rocking the cleansing gloves to be able to hit those, uh, <laughs> to be able to hit those numbers that he needed. But it's just the style of Gardevoir, where you have the massive Gardevoir EX sitting on the bench as your engine. It's rare, right, to have your engine also be such a tanky Pokemon. And then you always have that threat of Zacian V just being benched and powered up in the same turn. So 